Today I would like to discuss with you a book that I've just finished reading and a book that has affected me in an unusual sort of way. I feel a little bit torn between two attitudes with regard to this book. The book in question is this one. Sam Harris, The Moral Landscape. And the funny thing is that as I'm reading the book I find myself agreeing with the author on pretty much all counts when it comes to the main thesis that he is presenting in this book I find very little to quibble about I find very little to disagree with by and large I think he is knitting is hitting the nail on the head and yet this book has left me with a very deep sense of dissatisfaction and at first I had I couldn't put a finger on it. I didn't know what it was about this book that left me so deeply dissatisfied with the author and with the thesis that was being presented as a result. And I'm still not 100% sure. I will, perfectly, I will be honest with you on that one. I'm still not quite sure what it really is. But a couple of ideas have crystallized in my mind as to what exactly is bugging me so much about this book. And I'm going to run them past you and see if what you think. First of all, you know, obviously I'm asking this of people who have also read the book. And if not, I, I will recommend this as a read because it's certainly, for a lot of people, I'm pretty sure this will give you a look at morality from an angle that you hadn't considered before. So, yeah, do read the book because it is very, definitely worth the read. But this is what bugged me about it. First of all, I felt that Mr. Harris failed to bulk up his thesis with real substance. You see, he presents convincing arguments explaining how we could look at morality from a perspective of increasing human well-being, for example, and then that could lead us to look at you know attitudes towards morality as a landscape in which there are peaks and valleys and that science could help us to figure out how to get from lower points in the low moral landscape up to the higher peaks that is all well and good but never ever does he flesh this out with any concrete examples. He is very quick to point a finger at very valid, I must add, examples of where it all goes horribly wrong and where anybody with half a brain can see that the people affected by the moralities he discusses are somewhere stuck in the deeper valleys of the moral landscape, such as, for example, in fundamentalist Islamic cultures where stoning is on the order of the day and people's hands get cut off and all sorts of other barbaric practices. But on the other hand, he has never anywhere in his book does he provide a concrete example of explaining how somebody stuck in such a valley could use science to work his way up to the nearest peak. And that is dissatisfactory. To me that I find a great pity now I am quite aware that we're where insofar as you know we're looking at this particular way of looking at morality we may still be in the very early days but then again this is probably the sorest point as far as I'm concerned if we are still in such a you know, early stage of applying rationality and science to questions of morality, what I do think is somewhat misplaced is the level of arrogance that Mr. Harris sometimes displays in his book. On the other hand, the arrogance is very understandable because he does point out certain pretty obvious truths about morality and how it can go horribly wrong and how blind 
you know, irrational belief-based religious practices contribute to a lower moral standard. And, you know, I have no quibble with anything he says there. But on the other hand, given the fact that he is not yet able to provide clear roadmaps out of such moral valleys, I think his arrogance is somewhat misplaced. Not until we've, we can actually start giving people more clear directions out of their valleys, should we start being a little bit more certain about, you know, how right we really are. And I think that is my main concern with this book. That and I think also his insistence of looking at religion as a faith-based human endeavor that is irrational to its core. That I would personally disagree with. And again, I'm not saying that religion isn't always irrational because sometimes it certainly is. And a lot of religion is based on accepting as fact propositions that are clearly nonsensical and should be discarded by anybody with half a brain. But that doesn't mean that religion as a whole necessarily needs to be all like that. Now, in fairness to the guy, he does in his book speak of faith-based religion. But on the other hand, he never clarifies that there are other types of religion. And I have myself um, talked about this in previous videos, where in so far as I see, at its very basis, religion being an attitude, a relationship between the religious person and what I would call the transcendent, that which they see as transcending their own individual personal existence. Now, of course, that can be something that's based on blind belief in a superstitious notion, such as a god, whatever that is. But on the other hand, you can equally validly look at people's relationship with the transcendent insofar as that is humanity, for example, or reality as a whole. Some people relate to the rest of humanity, to reality as a whole, in a manner that I would consider to be religious in that sense, but none of it involves a blind belief in nonsensical notions. So, he can be a bit overly dismissive of religion, focusing on those types of religions that are based on belief in supernatural nonsense, and not making perfectly clear that or maybe he does equivocate this to all forms of any sort of religious experience. And again, I find that arrogant. I find that unnecessarily obnoxious and grating in a book like this. He doesn't need to present his thesis within the context of an anti-religious polemic at all. And yet, he often falls prey to that temptation. And I think that those two points that I just mentioned there are the main issues, the main reasons why I'm having a little bit of an issue with this book. And that's funny because by and large, as I already said at the start of this video, I agree with pretty much everything he says. And that's a pity.